Previously on Dugascopy Debate, John Hancock was fighting for Keynesism, stating a quote from John Maynard Keynes saying, in the long term, we are all dead. Here and now is what matters. He also said that Keynes' prescription for government stepping in and restoring confidence and the psychology of confidence was not entirely wrong for the 1930s. Now, let's have a look to see what Frank Hollenbeck had to say. That is a very important point, John. I would definitely, I would agree with you on that. But uh, uh, Wayne, what are you, uh, yeah, what are you thinking? Let's look at history. Most of the uh, recessions and depressions before uh, the Great Depression were relatively uh, short of duration. And uh, government was very active uh, during the Great Depression. has been very active uh, after the crash of 2008. And we we're still five years into the recession and we're still going down. So uh, I'm not so sure that the government has been very effective at, quote, changing the attitudes toward where the economy should be. Well, I would say just recent, I say 2013 has kind of changed sentiment a little bit. People, they are kind of trying to boost morale. I would say definitely there's been a change in the last, like, this year. Year, we were starting to see a change in the last two months. I definitely uh, think I'm, so. I'm not into herd mentality. I don't follow the herd. I look at the data. <laughs> I look at the data. I look at four quarter growth in the United States. Look at growth in Europe. I mean, why is there anybody being optimistic at the moment? I mean, you're likely to have lion mines in front of you. We've got the sequester. We have the the, uh, the the elections in Italy. We're going to probably have a default in Greece. I mean, we've got a whole bunch of landmines, and those landmines are ad infinitum. And we somehow believe that things are going to improve this year. They're not going to improve this year. We're going to be in a recession in Europe, and the U.S. growth may be one percent. And mm -hmm. uh, what Japan is doing is just going to lead us to currency and trade wars. I don't see any optimism out there. I I, I I'm not one of these people reading you know the newspapers and saying. Yeah, everything's fine. Everybody's optimistic at the moment. There's no reason to be optimistic. If we don't have optimism or some, you know, for all pessimists, you know, we might as well just dig you'll ourselves be, a hole. Be, you're gonna, I so. guarantee you, you'll be surprised how quickly this hope is going to change in you know, direction. And important. I think it will happen very quickly. I, I, I'm going to agree with Frank, but I'm going to disagree at the same time. I mean, I think he's right. I don't think the picture in Europe... Or the US. North America, or the US, or Japan is particularly good. As a matter of fact, I think it's no. pretty bad. Look at the UK. Look at the UK. What? They're triple dip recession, mm -hmm. and you're going to say hope? I don't see any yeah, hope. The US out there. is looking at a double. I don't recession. see any country turning around at the moment. But one of the differences is, and this is, gets back to your mm -hmm. Keynes question. I mean, Keynes was dealing with a world economy that was entirely different than the world economy they've been today. It was a much more fragmented world economy. There was such a thing as a national economy in the UK. There was such a thing as a national economy in the US. That world doesn't exist anymore. I mean, the economists today, they're a bit like old generals. They're always fighting the last war. They're fighting the war of 1929 right now. We have Keynes on, the Keynesians on one side, the, the Austrian school on the other side. I, I think they're both debating a crisis that doesn't exist right now. It's a different crisis. <laughs> that what's, what's happening today is, you know, we're, we're looking at Europe, the advanced economies, the OECD economies, and they're being killed by what is in fact a trade war. In, in fact, I'd go further. I'd say the 2008 financial crisis was a, a trade crisis <clears throat> um, that was masquerading as a financial crisis. You know, China, the developing world has been consistently pursuing a undervalued exchange rate policy for years. And China is not Singapore. China is not uh, even South Korea. It's a massive global player. In, in a sense, neither the, you know, the hardline austerity types in Britain, nor the let's be kind, let's be optimistic Keynesian types have it right. The real problem is these global imbalances. They've created a supply glut in in Who's in, created in these Asia's, who's created these imbalances? Is Chinese it government, policy. It's government policy. And government lack of, policy. Lack of government global economic governance. And, and right now we nonstop for the last five years we've been saying the government needs to do something on growth. The government needs to do something about unemployment. The government needs to do something. The government needs to do something. When the government what it actually should do is nothing. 
It should let the free market decide how alley, no, uh, resources case, should be allocated, to, and the government should. The po type of policies we should be following are more laissez-faire policies. What what I'm saying, and my position has always been, is that I consider that the government, by by being active is actually interfering with the adjustment process that we would have gone under if the government hadn't been interfering with the with, In the with scenario the I'm painting, if the government does nothing in the United States and Great Britain, um, they're, they're just going to continue to get wiped out. I mean, yeah. we, have, we have watched basically zero growth in, in the U.S. and Britain for the last five years. Well, this is not just a normal cyclical downturn, which is what the Keynesian and the, and the Austrian school are arguing. We've got a structural problem. Oh. And the structural problem is global. And the, the answer is going to be, first of all, Latvia, for China Latvia and others. Latvia had a structural problem, and they led their economy adjust in 2009, 2010. They've had GDP growth of over 5% in 2011, 2012. They're cutting taxes next year, and their growth may be over 6%. Okay, They, they basically led the market adjust, just like recessions and depressions before uh, the Great Depression of 1929, is they were relatively short-term. As long as the government got out of the way, let the resources go back into the private sector, and let the private sector drive, drive you out of You'd recession. be right. I would agree with you, Frank, if this were just a U, an EU problem or a Italy problem or a U.S. problem, but it's not. It's a global problem. And this will resolve itself only with a global solution. And right now, this transatlantic free trade agreement, to my way of thinking, is the first get-tough Western response to these global imbalances. And in that sense, uh, it, it, yeah, there will yeah, be a public what does get solution. tough mean? Is we're going to impose tariffs and quotas? That's not what I mean by get tough. You don't, hurt, you don't, you don't hurt your neighbor. You don't hurt China by shooting yourself in the foot. No, but what it might do is convince China that maybe you don't. They need you to don't revalue. hurt China by shooting yourself in the foot because if you put impose tariffs and quotas on Chinese imports, then when you go to Walmart, you'll pay twenty or thirty percent more for everything that you buy. You don't punish your neighbor by shooting yourself in the foot. Well, I hope it doesn't come to a trade war. What I well, do that's... hope is that China recognizes that, like the United States in 1925 to 1930, China is too big a piece of the global economy to free ride forever. It has to take responsibility for this global economic system management that is, it is, that is helped it get to where it is now what, and threatens its what we've continuing learned, growth. What we've learned about trade wars is it builds special interests. You know, and as soon as the special interests get in, it's just like, you know, the steel industry, you know, at first we defined uh, the steel industry, we were protecting the steel industry because it was, a, quote, an infant industry, okay, early 1900s. It's still an infant industry. What we found is that once you build special interests, they're likely to put the political pressure to be able to keep those interests. I'm, I'm totally against trade uh, retaliation, even though your neighbor may be doing things that um, is, is you consider inappropriate. My view is, like I said, you don't shoot yourself in the foot to punish your neighbor. What do you do then? What do you do? You live with it. Well, in a, in a, I think we're living with it right but wait now. Wait a second. Who, who says? Who says China? The Chinese government. I mean, the government. Oh, it's not just China. The, it's China. It's the, the let's, whole. Let's take China as an example. In other words, the basic logic is China knows the best places for resources to be allocated. So they're going to subsidize in, in one industry, and somehow they know what the future is. They don't. Okay, the market system is better at predicting what the future is going to be than any type of government policies. We've seen that. We have millions of examples of that. Okay? So why precisely. should I be worried about China subsidizing a particular industry that makes cost to me a lot cheaper? They have no idea whether that industry is going to but exist Frank, tomorrow. That's precisely what State Department and Treasury and the OECD and the IMF has been telling China for five years, but they haven't been listening. Fine. So now they're getting but, but the solution isn't to impose tariffs and quotas on China to punish them. Like I said, you don't punish yourself by shooting yourself in the foot. So Frank, on that note of shooting yourself in the foot, we will uh, put the debate to an end today. I guess you should have probably shake hands and... <laughs> no, it's no. great debate. Uh, go on. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, viewers, I hope you enjoyed this special Dukoscopy debate with the... Uh, Hollenbeck versus Hancock today and do tune back to the website for many interviews and press reviews. But for now, goodbye.